It's a 30 minute, five second game. Let's hit this center pole. Let's just grab it. There's actually no point in doing this queen move because the bishop just attacks it and it's kind of developing the bishop for him. There's no point going there either. So let's just go back to where we started. Just put a check on the king. Let's take. Support the pawn. Let's develop the knight, ready for castling. It's got two pieces on the pawn support with the queen it's probably going to block the queen's access to this square for a check on the king still have two pieces on the pawn so I have to be very mindful of that so if they didn't do that and they did a move per se we put the check on the queen comes for an exchange we take then if the king takes these two knights are still there so this pawn is not going to get supported because we've already got a white square bishop this knight could come here but it is blocking in the white square bishop so slowing the development suppose you've got the element of pushing here bishop attacking the knight but it looks a little bit self-suffocating So the bishop's moved, but it gives us time to castle or actually go for. I'm still wanting to go for it, <laughs> even though it's self suffocating. Let's go here. I mean, the knight could go back and block if the risk averse to getting rid of the queen. Nope. Okay, so let's take. If the king takes, obviously they know. Ah, so they've taken away the power of attacking the pawn. So we can come back and castle. Or we could attack their bishop. But if we attack their bishop, the knight takes the pawn. So our bishop could attack their knight. I think that's what we're going to do. I think that gives us that tempo to bring the bishop to life. Because in the previous calculation, it was getting suffocated. Now we're bringing the calculation back to life based on that, on those findings. It's all based on the reaction of the opponent because 
if the king had taken they would have kept the two knights on the pawn so that gave us a recalculation benefit well in my eyes anyway so the rooks come in to defend rather than the knight not sure does that give us time to actually go and castle now we've got the pieces developed we don't necessarily need to take yep let's castle So for that brief moment, we feel, well, I feel like we've improved the position on the board. It's gone back again to attacking this pawn. So we're going to take the knight off the board now because he had a two on one on the pawn, as we mentioned previously. Rooks don't have any place in the center of the board. So we like to try and take advantage of that smaller piece attacking the higher piece, but our knight would get taken. Knight could attack the higher piece just relinquishing the support of this for, for a moment but he could come down and still have a two on one and it's also attacking the knight and if we push the pawn up onto the rook then he can just take the pawn so let's reevaluate it at this moment in time we're not going to touch it we could just develop this rook supporting the pawn then if we're considering attacking the rook then at least we've got a piece supporting but he's still going to have a single he's going to have two pieces against one let's bring the rook across don't need to overthink it too much if he goes and castles we've got a target to aim for but he can take the pawn here and that looks like we can take this pawn if we take this, knight takes, if he pushes down, it looks like it's gone a little bit crazy now. I mean, if we take, he can take the pawn here. If we take this, then he takes and then he gets the pawn anyway. I'm gonna take, cause we're on the bishop. So if he takes the pawn, we take the bishop, then his king's not getting castled and we do have pressure here with a check from the rook if need be so he actually takes the knight all right so we do have a two on one on this pawn so let's take see if he wants to exchange probably will do because they'll be thinking hey, i've got the bishop against the knight so it's coming towards the end game we should win um, i'm a firm believer in it depends who's playing the game and who's using the pieces as to whether which piece is better out of the knights and the bishops. Because I like the flexibility of the knight. And I, I understand what the bishops can do. So I've put them on a par with each other. Not sure why this is taking so long to take. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward thing. In the grand scheme of things, the whole world would go, I've got a bishop, so I'm taking. I don't mind trading. Yeah, I don't know why that took so long. So he's um, x-rayed through to the pawn here. So we can bring the knight back down, just defending the pawn. It's going to attack the knight here. That was probably a missed opportunity so we'll push this pawn just protecting its oh and they're going a bit fast now okay so we're going to attack the rook and the pawn try and get this rook into life somehow A little bit of a fork, so get to double the pawns maybe, or he just goes down and gets it from here. So we'll do the fork thing. Goes down so that he doesn't get the pawns doubled. This rook will be in the center of the board for a brief moment, so can we take advantage of that? 
Miraculously, we are plus one coming towards the end game. Poor majority on this side. Let's. Ooh, if that pawn wasn't there, we would be quids in. Get a check on the king, double the pawns, like we said. Start moving the king across. It's looking to come here to attack this pawn, which he does do. Just going to bring the rook across. I'm going to keep it real simple as best possible. Just defend stuff that they're attacking. Get the king across here. Rook has to move now, so it's got no space. So moving back to attack the king. So we're going to see if we can get a rook exchange or not, but he's not going to go for any of that. So do we want to come? Really? We probably want to stay... Let's just move the king. Alright, and let's attack the rook again. And get the king across. Yeah. Alright, so he's got somewhere to hide. He's got these double pawns, he's trying to make something of them. And we've got pawn majority, we haven't started yet. So does the king do the protection thing, inching up? Got plenty of time to consider doing that sort of thing. Oh, and it's in the center of the board, so... Let's just put a check on the king first. And... Let's hit the pawn. Inside or outside? Let's go... In, because it's closer to the king. Probably attacking here. We can always come back. We're not afraid to come backwards or across a horizontal. I'm not tunnel visioned in attacking these pawns or anything. I'm just looking at what they're potentially going to be doing. I think the rook is coming here to attack this unprotected pawn. So simply bringing the rook back is going to defend it, surely. not done that so if we bring this like we are going to attack one of these pawns whilst they're considering doing this it's coming around the back it's coming around the back so if we go and take then it comes around the back here move the king here and start that pushing process or am I going too far away mm. we'll come there he comes across puts a check on us we move across Let's just move the king off of the potential threat of the line and then maybe come across and support the pawn here. Something's telling me these can look after themselves, but we need to start getting them activated. Okay, so he's attacking our poor majority. I'm not sure. Like I said, I think these can look after themselves. A rook in the center of the board really doesn't doesn't bode well for you, unless of course it's to your benefit, which is very rare that a rook in the center of the board is to your benefit. You're either sacrificing it or it's getting trapped. One of those two, I think. I think, yeah. And so we, if we hit his rook, he's defending the pawn, isn't he? That's why he's there. But I don't really have any issues with that. We can come here, stopping his rook from actually attacking our king. If he's chasing it down. 
we can bring our rook here nice and steady there's no rush in any way shape because his rook is looking a little bit finalized we can always drop here i suppose bring the king across it's looking like it's going to get trapped to me i'm going to bring the rook down he may go for a rook exchange So these types of endings, these are the types of things that I'm practicing for, especially for like playing over the board. And we'll see how this year goes for us. So he's probably squeezing here. Can attack like we said, and then bring the king. So we're going to a smaller piece attack. We did say they're probably just gonna drop here. We come here and then we'll just come here with this pawn. So his rook's going to have to go back and try and support them as best possible. He's going to just try and get rid of these our poor majority. It's not gone there. Okay, so he's got he's basically looking for an out. He's wanting to give his king uh, rook some space to get out. Um I was thinking of doing that, but then that just elevates his king up the board. So we don't want to do any of that. So we can push here with the idea of pushing here and attacking. But do they have some fancy business? So if we go like this, do they push down? And then if we pushed onto the um, rook, pawn takes with a check, rook takes. Something funky like that is going to happen. If it doesn't, we can push on, pawn takes, and we're on the rook. Nothing like that has happened. Just reassess. Nope, that looks pretty straightforward to me. Let's attack the rook. Let's take the pawn still on the rook. It's coming back. It's not going to exchange just yet. Uh, he's not doing anything I'm saying, is he? <laughs> right, so... We could attack. He's probably looking to come round the back. Don't really want my king going backwards. It's not, it's not a good look. We could do the same thing. Round the back. Smaller piece attacking a higher piece, kind of blocking off our own pawn though, isn't it? Then he comes down. Then he can attack the pawn. We've got Muffy defending the pawn there. Mm -hmm. Delicate operation. Push. Yeah, I don't think I like them apples, you know. If we come back, then they can't come down. and I don't like going backwards with the king and I'm, I'm not really liking the picture of his rook being able to roam around the back and 
start attacking stuff and that might be a nice touch we don't really want to be taking this pawn I'm going to push it now we've got a pass pawn so that gives them something to think about getting a check on the king here so that probably might have been the better move the king here because it does stop the rook from coming down good oh what's happening oh no 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 well, we've got a pass pawn I don't think I need to worry about anything let's take let's push the king what's happening with this pawn structure here so if we push this if he pushes down we take if he pushes down we take oh no ah very funny yeah so if he pushes down here and we take he keeps pushing past oh the magic so if we push this then there's none of that funky business yeah but it looks like we might well, we're not going to get Zugzwang we've got a pass pawn let's push this pawn don't overthink it so his next move potentially could have been that if we'd have left it that way I think we would have lost so we're taking away the options now so if he does that we can take this pawn's blocked practicing end games it's, it's so crucial and we don't get it right all the time but it does help let's move the king <clears throat> so it looks like we're going to come across and get this pawn and they're probably going to resign at this point now so it looks pretty clear cut now those crucial last three moves I think were yeah so he has to just keep defending that even if he goes behind the pawn's going to get promoted so there's no point really there we go let's just capture excellent 